satisfaction of the of Desmond Johnson, H. C. Will Place and Rick Major. And I've had some course experiences. <laughs> Which ones do you must start off with? Well, the, the little man down the lanes. We well, have the little man down the lanes. So you've got the little man down the lanes. Have you got any other stories? I've got some Woodford. Where's in that? Woodford House on the beach road. Yeah, well, because we need some other location for these. So I don't know where this is. Right, so have any of you given a ghost story? Try and give us as much information as the area that you're doing it. And then, um, and then story number one. This is before the cement, the uh, power station was there. Just after the war. And I was down there duck shooting. And I sat on the bank. I, the tide was coming in. And I sat on the bank, like I'm sitting now, and the dog in front of me. And there was a beautiful night, moonlight night. And Patch, the dog's name, he started to growl. Looking over my shoulder, and he was growling. And I looked mm -hmm. around. Mm -hmm. And there was this little, mm -hmm. this is a little fella standing there with a peak cap. I don't know what he's called. I don't know. I don't know what he's called. And his trousers tied up like that. You know, the old fashioned way. Stop a rat's going up by then. <laughs> and uh, I turned around and I said, Of course, I said, where did you come from? And he just disappeared. But he was as plain as looking at me, no. And I've seen him since that, after that, since the power station has been there. I was down there one night, and the same sort of night, beautiful moonlight nights, white cloud, mackerel cloud. And um, he was walking on the seawall. I went up on the seawall and walked after him, and I couldn't gain any... You know, it was the same distance all the time. As fast as I went, it didn't alter the distance. Lynn said that when you saw him once, there was something to do with a sheep not moving. Yes, the, the first night I saw him again was um, like it, the river was forming an oxbow, a couple of acres of ground, and I was sat under the bank, and I thought it was a friend of mine, Laurie Hopkins, St. Athens. And uh, he walked, it went through the sheep, and they didn't move, they were lying down. And the sheep didn't move. So I thought, oh, I'll go and have a look. Because there was always duck on the bend in the river. I got to the bend in the river, and there was just no marks in the mud. I called Laurie, Laurie, and no answer. But there was no one there. No marks in the mud or anything. And this person that went that way didn't come back. It just disappeared. So you've seen him at least three times? Well, I've seen him on the three... Yeah, that's three times. But uh, I know two other people have seen him. What, what's the dress One uh, when, when the sand dunes were there, before the golf course, all there was sand dunes there. Mm. And there was... Um, Tommy Liscombe. And there were sand dunes around the other pool? Hmm. Oh, okay. I forgot what we needed. There's a golf course around right now. There was a golf course oh, there. there's not now. Yeah, not it's now. Not now. Yeah. And um, there was a pub there, the Ocean Building. It was an Ocean Pub or something. And he was with his wife-to-be in the sand dunes. Lying in the sand dunes. And she said to him, Tommy, she said, there's a little man watching us. And he turned oh. around and started to shout at him. And he disappeared. And he described him to me exactly the same. Waistcoat, jacket, big cap, and his trousers. What colour was his waistcoat? Brown. And his trousers? Brown. All oh, matching, they were brown. And his big cap? Yeah, and you could see, you could see the buttons and everything. Clear as day. And, it was and then there was another person, a shift foreman, on 
notes with me on the cement board, in the roof cement board, and uh, he was down there one night, he said, fishing. And I said, yeah, go on then. I said, carry on. And he said, I happened to look, and he said, there was a little man standing alongside me. I said, what was he dressed like? And he had described him exactly the same as I just said. Can you make it out? There's no answer to it, is there? Do you believe he exists? Because he just disappears. Right. As soon as you... Well, I spoke to him. <laughs> and I've talked to him myself. But the dog could see him as well, you see. But the sheep couldn't. But the sheep couldn't. Oh, the sheep didn't see him. Yeah. But he, he, and he, you, you, you couldn't see any leg movement. He just sort of, you know, there was no sort of stepping. That's very strange. It just glided along. And I went after him on the sea wall to see if I could catch up with him, whether he was real or not. And when we got underneath the the end of the wall, under the caravan, for the guy, there was no one there. Not a soul. Hmm. Is it, what, what do you think of that, Michelle? Have you lived your whole life? Yeah. All those people who actually lived around a soul who actually lived around all their life. Well, the one is the foreman is a Barry bloke, late Stan Laven. Is there any with you about any link to do with the area? Only that he worked on a cement brush with me. He was a shift foreman. Uh, and the other guy, um, he, he was local. Wasn't the he? other one was local, yeah. Well, that's a common thing. But uh, I haven't spoken to anyone else about it, but <coughs> there's a lot of people who used to go down there. And most of them wouldn't have seen it. No. And you know why? Because they're not making it out. No, funny enough you say that. There was a girl from up the valley who used to spend a week down there, yeah. duck, duck shooting. And she had a friend, part of the family in St. Athens. And he saw her. So she did, I haven't spoken to her. Yeah, but did he see it? Hmm? Did he see the figure? It's a girl. No, but you said you had, you had junior somebody in St. Athens. Yeah, what was the connection to the girl? Oh, yeah. uh, um, family, I should yeah, think. Yeah, but did she see, see it? I don't know. So why did you mention it? Was that just that she's down there? She could have seen it, but I wouldn't have known. I, I think she would have said that she had. Oh. That's even interesting that she did. Mm. But she only used to come down in, you know, in the, sometime in the winter. It, uh, that means nothing. She would have seen it. Because if, if she, she would, I was down there one night shooting, <coughs> and I could hear a lot of shots over that way, and I went over to have a look, and I shouted, and it was a girl. She was down there. Well, um, is there anything else you want to say about that story, or? Well, there's not much you can say about it. So what, what about the other stories then? Well, the one in Woodford, that's gone out now. This was just during the war, I should have had in the 40s. Where, where, where is this place? Wait a minute. Woodford? Yeah. On the beach road. Yeah. This is the name of the house. Yeah, it was the old rectory. Right. Woodford. And it's still known as that, yeah? Yes. Right. Yeah. And it was empty. There had been soldiers in there during the war. Oh, part, and they'd gone, and it was empty. And Russell, my cousin, and I went in, nosing around. <laughs> it was all empty. It was just wooden floors upstairs. And um, we were up there, and was and we could hear boots clumping, nearly boots coming up the stairs. So in the bedroom, 
the second bedroom along on the landing, the landing goes right along the back of that house. There's the doors in the wall where you go into the attic. So we didn't know who it was coming in. So we got up in the attic and we were squint peeping through the door, through, through the doors. And the boot, the sound came into the bedroom and walked towards the window, but there was no one there, just the noise. And that was from below. And we got out of there a bit quick. <laughs> there was nobody at all in the trouble. No one, no sign of anybody. Just this feet coming up the stairs. And they were nearly boots. Because you could tell by that they were quite heavy boots. Well, um, there is there is something I want to ask you that Lynn said, but have you got any other ghost stories like that? Anything else? Anything um, odd? I could, I can't think about it more. All I've got on mind is that gate. <laughs> but you haven't got, you haven't got any of those Oh, we were in Land Mace. That's right. We were in Land Mace. But I think it was the back of the rectory or something like that. Anyhow, we were, and it was a dark night, windy dark night. And we were ferreting. Poor chickens. <laughs> a long time ago and uh, <laughs> we could hear horses galloping in the field so we jumped in the edge and got out the way but we didn't see any horses at all past us so I said well, weeks after I said about it to somebody and he said a farmer haven't got any horses in the fields when you say horses you know, there was more than one. Oh. There was quite a few with us out of it. Yeah. I didn't know you could hear them coming horses like that galloping. You could hear them a mile away. But we got out of the way quick and jumped in the hedge and looked, and there was no sign of horses at all. <laughs> and then, and then the, this chap we were talking to, he said, Oh, you haven't got any horses after all, a farmer. I said, well, he did that night. <laughs> yeah, not, yeah. There is, um, there is a story that goes around the fields. Is there? Any more detail about the horse? The horse? Yeah. Well, <laughs> it was as quick as that. We just heard them. And they got a pass, open to see them, and we didn't. But there was definitely more than one there was. And then with the cavalry. <laughs> lady of Hounds? Hmm? Did you see the Lady of Hounds? Well, I saw, I don't know what that was. It wasn't, it, it was, um, before the school and everything was there, it was a footpath. There's still one there now, but it goes around in a different way. The, this came straight across the field. And uh, there was a light came on. Back by, what's this, the church there? The Catholic church. The Catholic church in the road. And it was above the tree. Oh, hell of a height. Where's this again? In Lancet, down by the Catholic church. Oh, okay. The other side of the um, school. Oh, you know, yeah, the one that yes. Yeah. yeah. The only way I could describe <laughs> it, it was about twice the oh, size yeah, of a of course I know it. Twice oh. the size of a telegraph pole. Right. And as straight as a die, like a fluorescent tube. Yeah. And it went right up above the trees in the sky. And we started to run across the field then. And it it went out and it appeared in front of us by the stone. By Di Hughes's sheds. Mm -hmm. A little wood there, and it, it, it just came on. And then as we got closer, it just went out. But it was brilliant, brilliant white. Like a, just like a fluorescent tube. Only about. What do you make of that? I need a cup of tea. <laughs> it's about 50 yes, times please. bigger. What, 50 times bigger than a cup of tea? Bigger than the telegraph board. And high, terrific high. 
Look at that. It's just strange. It sure is. Is there any more myths and legends? Because there's just one. Let's go one question I've got. Oh. <laughs> is that it's back on again? Oh, wow. Any other myths and legends? Not that I've seen, I've heard of all of them. What about history and archaeology in the area? Discoveries? I found a lime case. Where to? In the cliff down Dim Hall. Ah, oh, that's right. What? Um, near the coast? Yeah, right on the. Well, the cliff had gone away yeah. and it was shown. Yeah. It's like. like um, off, off, off the land goes down towards St. John. Yeah, that's it. Along the coast, yeah. Um, so, um, actually, actually, one story was the one I came for, so we got more than that, but um, I wanted to ask about. I'm sure they mentioned that when you were a child, you, there was a tree stump that grew over in Alison Collins in it. Was that you? Oh, that was Yeah, it. that sounds like one. Yeah. Can I go with that now, then? <laughs> Well, it's not that one. Oh, yeah. There's the pines in the tree. You take sugar, don't you, Carl? No, no, no. No, no you don't. I'll have some biscuits. Not a chocolate milk. Oh, yeah. Right, go on then. When they built Desna, where we lived. Where is that? Um, right opposite the cemetery, forward and wrong. Oh, just opposite on the main road. Yeah, there. there's one house. Oh, right, yeah. I don't know what the name of it is now. It's but still when is we it still is? It still is Desma, yeah. Oh. Well, Desma is Des, and my sister's Ma is Desma. So you had it built, did you? Huh? You had it built? Or yeah. you bought it? Yeah. Right. No, my father. Right. Then, or before the war. Right. And um, d my, my grandfather then had a lot of horses in the upper house, which. Yeah. And um, he was pulling the trees down. Right. And he pulled this one tree down, a big um, elm tree, as it were, and in the roots underneath, there was all these Roman coins. How do you know they were Roman? And a lot of reef. Oh, right, okay, fair enough. Were they silver, gold, bronze? Well, they were bronze. Oh, right. And I had them in a box for years. And then I went to the army in 1945. And while I was in the army, my mother threw them out. They went out in the rubbish. How many were in the box? Well, I should imagine there's about oh, a dozen or more I had from. And it was stuck in the roots in the earth, in the, you know. The so you had a, did you have a look for more, or that was it? That, that was all of them? Well, I won all that interested in, you know, I was only a youngster. But I thought, oh, keep them. But nobody said they were Roman, but that's what they were, because it was a big nose on them, and a laurel wreath, and they, they were Roman coins. Were, were, they, were they oddly shaped? And they were thick. Oh, they were thick? They were quite thick. How big were they? A uh, uh, size of... A little bit... Like size of a one pound piece, two pound piece? Two pence. A bit bigger than that. And a two pence piece. Do you remember any more detail about them? Well, not really. Just that, that, that they were all stuck in there. And I took them to be Roman. Mm. And, the, and you, you haven't told me where the tree was? It was in the, in the grounds where they built this map. At the back or the front? Oh. In the front. Okay. In the front. I haven't, you haven't got any biscuits, sorry, because it's diabetic. That's really well, 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 that's really Desma. Uh, yeah, I lived there, yeah, but I was a baby. Yeah. Uh, were, were they, um, they, 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 were, they were about, they were about that size, right? Yeah. Yeah, and there was a, can you remember, like, being a little raised bedroom on the outside? 
No, yeah. they were flat, I think. Yeah, they were flat, but what I'm trying to say, were they... There was no raised edge. Were they perfectly round? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know what exactly they were. I, um, 1797, um, they were German third cartwheel coins. That's what they were. Huh? They were yeah, that's what they were. Not Roman? They were Roman, but you can just imagine that, right? Mm -hmm. um, I don't think somebody would have liked um, losing... Um, yeah, they, they sound like it was a 1797 Cartwell coins, yeah. Uh, but really, really big, thick things. Oh, no, they're quite thick. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And then they were perfectly round around the outside. And they were perfectly round. Yeah, they had, that, 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 the George, George had a narrow roof on his head. That's it, then. That's, that's it. They were Cartwell coins. Oh, and ran through them all the way. Would it be worth anything? They, they, would, have, they would have been worth something back then. They could have been, they could have been used as money as well. Mm-hmm. So she, she actually took she actually took money, <laughs> which, which is quite nice. Yeah. Yeah, that's what they were. They were cartwheel. Uh, but somebody, um, it, it would make sense because my, um, yeah, I, I haven't got my um, my antique maker um, hat on for reading the landscape at this minute, but I would presume that that room would would be operational to the British. Back in the 1800s, so that would have been the main room there. That yeah. would make sense. Yeah. There was about, I think it was about four or five trees, like, right right across, right down the road. But, and and, and it, it, don't tell me they're about that wide. Or the bigger. trees, yeah. all the trees was really big. About about that width? Huge trees. Yeah, it would make, make, make sense about, um, that would make sense, because they'd be in the roots. Uh, they, they would date, they, actually, they would date the trees that they implanted if they were in the roots mm. to 1797. Mm, yeah. Do you remember any trees there? There was no. one opposite. You know the there style? Was one opposite. You yeah. know the style? Yeah. There was a couple yeah. there, but they built houses in now, haven't they? Yeah. But it was all fields then, you see. That and, makes sense. And they pulled them down across the road and then cut them up with the chainsaws. And they were really, really big trees. Well, no, they cut them up with trains. This was, this was what year again? <laughs> yeah, that's loud, isn't it? Yeah. So, so the, these, these were. The, your, your dad was cutting the trees down just to. And be my in. grandfather, and the horses had to pull them. See. So this would be in 1935. So back in the 30s, yeah. yeah. 1935. It's all happening. Stay there, Germany. Farm food. Farm food. Oh, I thought. Okay. Yeah. 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 Alright. Right, so any more little stories you want to tell me? <laughs> I don't know. I would tell you last, but they're not ghost stories. Well, do you know, what, what about history and archaeology? Do you know anything about... Do you know anything about the trees in, um, on the beach? Which ones? Well, out in the oh, sea. Oh, the black boys? No, 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 no. These are over... You go down onto the beach, you go over on the right, on the sand. Oh, uh, you okay? I got pictures of them somewhere. Proper, proper tree stumps in the mud. And they were in the sand now. Yeah. And it's got to be a very, very low tide. And we, my wife and I were walking there one day with a dog. And the trees were there. Big trees. But we, the local history people said they were... Um, the, the land went out there, and, yeah, there right. a, and there was a forest there. That's right, there would have been a woodland, yeah. Uh, yeah. That would, have been, that would have been indicated by the sea. And the stumps are still there. That's right, 7,000 years old there, yeah. <laughs> so that, that, that's going down to um, Kohu Bay, yeah? Yeah. Uh, by where the hill point on the, on the left, you've got the, the, the shop down there, yeah? The shop, and then over to the right of the shop. Right out as far as... On a, a very, very low tide. So if you're walking out to Scare Bank, which is all the way over there, you'd be going in that direction, mm. yeah? yeah? I've got you. It's in Donald's Way. That's where it starts. And um, that's what I was told, or we were told, that there was a forest and the stumps are still there, but they uncovered them. You got the money? How much do you want? Right. Stop it just for a second. <laughs> <laughs> my dad 
he used to go to the, one of the pubs in Landmace. And he walked out with his plug and he was a tramp around here. There was a lot of tramps about in those days. And he, he went into the pub and he said, I just walked out, he said, with old George. And uh, they said, well, you couldn't have done. He said, he died a fortnight ago. Well, he said, I just walked around with him. So, so did you say he, he walked out with him and walked down with him? He walked up the road with him to the pubs. Ah, right. But when he got in the pub, he inquired about him. Uh, and uh, he said, oh, I walked up with him. He said, no, tonight. And he said, he couldn't have done. He died two years, two, two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, oh my God. <laughs> nice stories like that. Uh, right, my, my, my granddad used to work at uh, Prairie Head State Bank, right? Because yeah. uh, in the late 1930s, before war was declared, they knew it was coming. Yeah. So they, they, were, they were building the, the hangars, and he, he was a dumper driver. He used to go up on the roof with his dumper truck covering it with a... How that worked out, I don't know. Anyway, can you remember what the landscape was like at Rye Red State Avenue before they developed it? What was it like? It was all land then. Was there any? Was there anything on it, like mounds, buildings, anything? No, I can't think of that. Not as I can remember. No. 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 I can remember during the war, back coming back when, but it was all built then. They were machine gunning. They had light bobo guns on the public guns, yeah. All along the runway and all. Did, did the Luftwaffe ever come this way? Um, I, I was out, where was it? On the back road. What's it called, the back road? The Fairs to Chapel. Ah, uh, but um, Eggers Brewers. Eggers Brewers, yeah. that's right. Um, a Bofa fighter came, one of ours yeah. came over and machine gunned the planes out in the fields, the surrounding fields. But it was a captured one or something. Um, ah, the, the Germans, the, a captured one, the Germans captured it. At, uh, and they, they machine gunned the road and they tipped the planes over. Ah, I was right. a Saturday afternoon. And I had a long come from. So that must have been about 1940, 1940, that would have been. Yeah. Because it was in captured planes that the Germans yeah. captured. When they came over, it was in the afternoon. Yeah. Just flew in, I thought he was going to land. The next thing he opened up with the machine guns. Yeah, that would make sense. Mm. You don't hear about that, do you? No. You, you wouldn't hear about yeah. that. And there were guns up at the settlement, weren't there? Yeah, but he had to move them back. It was... It was Oh, with netting over and camouflage netting. Yeah. Oh, we used to go and play on the top like a bouncy castle. <laughs> and there were soldiers underneath? Yeah, they, oh no, they weren't. They weren't near there then. But, but we were kids and we used to go up there and play. They didn't know it. But the first night they opened up on the aircraft, they were shattering the windows. I know the windows in Desma were rattling. Yeah. Can I ask you a really strange question? Mm -hmm. Can you remember any stories of any German soldiers landing along the coast? Submarine crews, anything? No. No. Nothing like that at all. Nothing. No. Do you know, can you remember any uh, POWs? Do you remember seeing any? Yeah. My mother used to give him tea, <laughs> but my father said he'd shoot him rather, rather than give him tea. What, what do you mean? They used to pop in the house? No, they'd be up marching them up and down the road, and, all, and sometimes he was just sit in the cemetery, by the cemetery on the grass. And my, my mother used to go out and offer him a cup of tea. This is something, I guess. No, so was, so was mine. Um, <laughs> um, and... Uh, so, were these Italians or Germans? Germans. And where, where were they kept? I don't know. It wasn't on a farm, it's just too far away. Yeah, too far. No. Yeah. 
So where was the prisoner of war camp? I, I don't know. They were I can't remember a prisoner of war camp. Oh, they know. must have been local to a part of yeah. yeah. And it's too near the um POWs near an airfield. That sounds a bit strange. Unless they must brought them down to work on farms. I don't know what it was, but I know they used to walk them down the road there. Well, a large number of them, or just a small group? Oh, one. just a small group. Perhaps they brought them down to work. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't remember that. I was in a POW camp myself. 45. Yeah, but in Germany, yeah. No, that was up in... Um, Sheffield, up on Lodge Moor. Well, right. What, what prisoners were there? Well, they had about 17,000 of them there. What Germans? Yeah. High ranking, weren't they? Hmm? Were they high ranking? Some of them. Yeah. Well, they had their uniforms on. Cool. I tell you what, we'll, um, we'll, we'll end that there now, okay? But if there's anything else you can think of, uh, let Ben know and I'll come yeah. up from another cup of tea. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right, now don't think of anything else now. Uh, we'll call that a day there. Really? Go for it. Actually, the bomb. Yeah. It was a 50 pounder. The <laughs> Collins, the, fa the bloke that owned the farm, down there then, and the river ran through, and the ducks used to lay. In the water, in the hedge, you know. And uh, I was down there one day looking for them, and I happened to look in the hedge, and there was this fin, part of a bomb sticking up in the hedge. <laughs> and I reported it to the police in Landworth. Yeah. And the copper came down, and he, I took him down, showed him where it was, and he said, Grab hold of the, grab hold of it. And we'll take it up to the... <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> so I told him to laugh. What year was this? Oh, after the war. Sometime after. Oh. And um, we carried it up across the field, uh, up the, along the cemetery, over the stile. And the car was parked by the cemetery gates. And she put it, <laughs> put it in the boot. It's a 50-pounder. Put it in the boot, he said. <laughs> Uh, and I said, what if it goes off? <laughs> we won't know anything about it. <laughs> uh, so and did... off he went with the bomb. <laughs> I don't know what he did with it. Uh, and the meadow, I'd say about the meadow being um, booby trapped, what he used to do. Oh, the meadows down there had um, supposed to be landmines in there. It was a tennis court and it was all fenced, fenced <laughs> down, down, down behind the, the shop on the, the shop. meadow. Uh, the Landwitz um, Beach Cafe. Oh, there, no, yeah, we were talking about that earlier on. Yeah, I can't, I, yeah, can't keep the radio. Yeah. <laughs> um, we were only kids then, it's the early part of the, the war. And uh, we go up on hills and throw, throw pebbles in there to see, see if we could put one off. <laughs> What, if they had, I wouldn't see it. No, oh, maybe not. I don't know. You'd have set off the whole field. But they said there were mines in there, so we wanted to find out. So we were throwing these pebbles in. <laughs> but nothing happened. That makes you think whether they were there in the first place. Yeah. yeah, that's what I was thinking. But that's what they said. They were in there. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. No, they. they it might say this is my this is my forensic archaeology coming in line. That that area gets flooded, yeah. Yeah. Um, and um, and obviously after a long time in the ground, if the if the bombs are there, mm -hmm. with, with a load of water and all the rest of it, no, I don't sound as if they were. No, it that don't make sense, does it? No, you're no. right. <laughs> it don't make sense. No. It's a rumor, most probably. Isn't yeah, it? exactly. Yeah, we had a. Uh, a German bomber crash not far from there on the beach. Oh, right, on the beach? Yeah. And kids again. There was belts of ammunition there, you know, machine gun. 
And we took them in. There was a red shed then. Eh? No, you wouldn't remember that. Inks. They had a red shed on the left. Yeah. On the end of the road where they didn't know. Yeah. It's just before the shop. Yeah, and it's gone now. Yeah. On, the, on the left. Yeah. Building the, the hills. Side. Just before the... Beach. Where the steps are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there was a fireplace and all in there. And we... There was no one in there when we were there. And we put these bullets in the grate. In the, and set fire. <laughs> put the fire... Blew the grate out. <laughs> <laughs> so, so why, why is it uh, this this German bomber was just left on the beach? Well, uh, she wasn't on that. She came over in on fire and crashed on the beach. What about the what about the crew? Did they survive? I have no idea. There's a few planes. There was one in front of the cemetery crashed. This, um, a German fighter. What on the road? No, 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 down the, on the bottom of the cemetery. Oh, right, yeah. And I was just here by the river. There was yeah. a bit of a pond there. And I was going down there to have a look. And I said to me, don't go down there, Des. He said, I just covered the pilot with a wing, part of the wing. Yeah. So, he was dead, yeah. Mm. So that, that was a fighter, yeah? That was a fighter, that one. Right, so, so you got the one coming down in the sea, mm -hmm. a bomber. Bomber. I think she was about a four engine, well, I would imagine. Oh, what, the, the one on the beach? Yeah, the one on the beach. Right where the black boys were. Ah, right. Yeah, we'll on the corner. Yeah, the black boys. But there were Germans in the cemetery, weren't there? Buried, yeah. yeah. Were they from that plane? They could have been. Yeah, could have been. In the corner on the right, there was a shed there, two sheds, and there was a few graves there, Germans. As you go in, on the right? Yeah, right down in the bottom, right down. Oh, right bottom. down in the bottom, right. But they were dug up and shipped back to Germany. Were they? Yeah. They I dug um, Canadians and all sorts. Of, there was loads down there. And um, they dug them up, took them away in a furniture lorry. Took them back to where they come from. Okay, on that note, thank you very much for that. Now we're going to call this interview to an end. Yeah. Fascinating stories. Uh, very good. Yeah, that was good. So, no, it was definitely good. So, uh, what, what, what date's it today? It's the 5th. Um, 5th, yeah. Okay, yeah, the election was on the 4th. Anyway, thank you very much, Des. That's all right.